Should we start now? Bu Anggia? Uh, yes, I think you can start. Um, okay. So just a moment. Yes, please. Okay, um, so good morning and good afternoon. Uh, we have guests from different time zones today. Um, thank you everyone for coming uh, and welcome. I would like to say welcome to today's celebration of International Women's Day to, um, 2022 brought to you by the Organization for Women in Science for the Developing Countries or our Indonesian National Chapter. My name is Angia Prasetya Putri and I'm from the National Research and Innovation Agency, um, Republic of Indonesia. And it is both a pleasure and an honor to be moderating today's event. So before we start, I think, um, we will be um, listening first to Indonesia's national anthem, Indonesia Raya. Um, and um, for that, I would like to say hello to our distinguished guests, um, Associate Professor Ganya Alaki, Professor Hasin Azari, and also Dr. Sri Fatmawati. Welcome and thank you for being with us here today. And I'm sure all of the audience are looking forward to today's event. So welcome also to all our Indonesian National Chapter members and um, the rest of the audience members as well. So I think, um, first of all, in the agenda, we'll move on to um, listening to Indonesia's National Anthem. Um, the first one. National chapter highlights this topic of equity, diversity, and inclusion. War does not unite us. So, to share some insights and experience as a woman scientist within that context, um, we have a very special guest for you all. First things first, though, to kick off our event today, we will have two welcome speeches. Um, for the first one, I would like to welcome our very own president of our Indonesian National Chapter who's also the president of ALBI, Akademi Ilmuwan Muda Indonesia, or the Indonesian Young Academy of Science, and also a lecturer at School of November Institute um, of Technology, 
Please welcome Dr. Sri Fatmawati. Hello, Dr. Fatmawati, how are you? Um, I hope you're doing well today. Thank you, uh, Angia, uh, for your kind introductions. So, uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And uh, good afternoon from Surabaya. Uh, good morning <laughs> for uh, Ganya in Italy and also for uh, Prof. Azari. Um, Honorable uh, OS Executive Board Asia Pacific Region, Prof. Uh, Hasin Anupa, Anupa Mahasari, and also distinguished uh, speaker today, uh, Associate Professor Ganya Al Najib, and also for our moderator, Dr. Anggia um, Prasetya Putri. Uh, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, first I would like to thank you for all of you uh, for your time to participate in this webinar. Uh, it is our great pleasure uh, to welcome all of you uh, to the International Women's Day celebration from uh, OS Indonesian National Chapter with the title Equity, Diversity and Inclusion World Doesn't Unit Us. And we know that uh, on the 8th of March, every year is celebrated as uh, International Women's Day. And it's a day dedicated to celebrating women's achievement in various social, political, cultural fields, and also science. And it is considered to be an important point in the movement of uh, women's rights. It is the day when women in our life are recognized for their achievement in their respect field, such as uh, a teacher, a scientist, an artist, healthcare, etc. And um, why we choose the topic, as I mentioned before uh, today, because a scientist is supposed to stand in solidarity with the, uh, with the people at war era. We need to involve in promoting peace and justice by joining call for increased solidarity and actions from across the global community. And uh, we also need to encourage states, multinational entities, supporting the needs for concrete measures to protect people in the world's uh, area, especially in their higher education institution and academic. Uh, therefore, we invite not merely the government, but also those who have uh, possible cooperation with the philanthropic or private sector initiative. And we also call the importance of protection of uh, on um, fundamental issues to secure treatment scientists and to promote academic freedom. We do this because scientists and academic freedom are essential to promote quality research and education. Hence, we believe that the universal values of human rights by respecting uh, societies and humanity vision. And we, uh, we know that uh, there are a few countries where women are not given equal opportunities and their only role uh, is considered to take care of the house, etc. However, this needs to change because every woman deserves to sign an equal opportunity to, to be given as a woman uh, as it is given to a man. And uh, for age, men have more privilege in every aspect in life in a society, which could be pay scale, social status, or voting right percentage. But we are living in the 21st century and the world is slowly moving towards gender balance. And so it is important to have a day that reach out and help in solving all the discrimination that happening against women. As we all know how important women are. And as I mentioned uh, before, uh, that one of the field that many women are engaged is the field of science, where many uh, women become scientists uh, and um, never forget their nature as a wife, as a mother, uh, and also a child. Yeah. Being a female scientist while surfing somewhere, we must be uh, responsible uh, for all of the choice that we made. Whatever the condition, we must to continue to develop our knowledge. 
being a female scientist, we also still be persistent in doing our research, even though the condition sometimes um, is not so safe as experienced by our guest speaker today, Prof. Ganya, who had struggled to do research um, in a place not far from the bomb blast and also in the condition where her country you know, was at war. Um, and um, the tema today, through this webinar, we realized that the importance of gender equality between women and men, especially in education, in research, the scientific diversity of research, and how we can build an open environment for everyone to support each other, even though they have a, a different backgrounds. And I still remember that the first day I met uh, Prof. Ganya, you know, she is very uh, lovely. And I never imagined before that she came from the war area. And I hope uh, her experiences as um, yeah, uh, one of prominent scientists from the war area, which is now, I think uh, she have a lot of experience and not only in the developed country, but also how we she can, uh, yeah, did a lot of research in her country, and you know, uh, she still um, support. Uh, she still, yeah, supervise some student there, and I know it. Uh, hopefully, her experiences, her motivation, can be a one of inspiration for all of us, especially the female scientists, um, to always keep fighting, struggle. And in, in every research that we have done. Um, I think um, this is uh, my opening speech. Yeah? And hopefully um, today we will have a splendid webinar. And um, after this webinar, we can yeah, be a new female scientist with more, more spirit uh, to perform our research in the future. That's all from me. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for your um, uh, time and also for your willingness to support this uh, uh, webinar and also in the national chapter. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Dr. Papawati, for that wonderful and inspirational um, opening speech. And I'm sure that everyone's looking forward to what um, Professor Ganya will have to share later um, in the day. And, um, but next, I would like to also welcome another special guest, Professor Dr. Hassin um, Azari. She is the AUS Executive Board um, Asia Pacific Region and also the Director of Center of Biomedical Science and Engineering, um, United International University in Bangladesh. Hello and welcome, Professor Azari. Um, so I hereby invite you to please um, give your welcome speech. Time and place are yours. Thank you. Okay. So. Uh, thank you. Are it, is, is it audible now? Yes, yes. We can hear you clearly. Okay, thank you. First of all, good morning, good day, and wherever you are. And assalamu alaikum, everyone. And uh, I'm very much honored to be here. And thanks to the Indonesian National Chapter host, especially Dr. Dr. Sri Padmawati, because she's doing a lot for the women and trying consistently to do something for the Indonesia's national chapters. So, you know, after her inspiring speech to all of you, to the members of Indonesia national chapters, I think we are progressing slowly, but we, if we work in this way with a team, surely we can do something for the women in the, for the younger generations. So I'm just giving us something this, that from since 19s, women are, are under oppressed. There is some inequality all over the world. But when there is a campaigning, Austria, Denmark, Germany, Switzerland, then we have an International Women's Day declared by the United Nations in 1975. So this is the example that from 19s, the women are coming step by step. And now in 1975, they approved our day for us to symbol 
bleak reminder of our historic journey for their globally to better their lives. And you see, and this is the thing we have to see so the our generation and next generation can do the same things through these national chapters to awake the women, to awake ourselves, to say something that we have to do a lot. So how to do this? Of course, we need our voice, we need our rights, we need signs, we need educations and everywhere. So journey is not the end and this is a continuation. And also the theme is everything that if we do something for the to today, for the sustainability, maybe we are not here, but our generation will be here. So they know how to do these things. They will guide the next generations. So it is the equality, you know, that in developing country, it's not only the women, when there is a marriage, when there is a children is girl, everywhere, I don't know what about Indonesia, but it's still in Bangladesh, in uh, in the urban and rural area. In some some families, there are a huge burden when you, when there is a child is born is a girl. So gender equality is not an, a fundamental human right. This is the actual world ability we have seen in research. We have seen the talk from the international bodies, and they always reaffirmed us this human rights and sustainable development. So we are far ahead now, but we say still, we are not coming from the four worlds. Some of the women, or we can say most of the women. And you see, I we, when we see the equality, then something will come in our mind. What is that? That is not only in science, in politics, in governance, in head of the states, in parliaments, in uh, armed forces, in lawyers, in fashion designers, in technologies, everywhere we should be a same equality. This is the main things because when we do the research, but it should be implemented. We should be a Nobel Prize. You see, we, the people from uh, Europe and many uh, women are getting Nobel laureate now. So we have to think in this way, how do we do in a come into the eyes of the world's vision? And, and when we go to the, because we are talking, because uh, we are talking for the, uh, our uh, uh, not literacy people's, and we are talking about the research and scientists. But when we are talking like we were originating when we are in a developing country like us, then we see that many lever force from the women. They are low paid, low productivity activities. And there is also, there are many surveys survey that the 92% of the employed women are labor and they engage in informal economy. And this formal economy has to be established by us for raising the status of women and promoting the gender equality. So our mission and vision of the, this OST goals, as well as for everyone is not stopped for all kinds of women, not only for scientists, researchers, educating women, who were is in, in besides living in our home, who were in the village, for whom everyone, for everyone's right, we have to talk. And you especially, we cannot avoid men, but in practical article society, but men and women, this should be a balanced participation. That's which we are talking everywhere. When we see in a meeting, only one and two women is there and 30 are men. So why? because it is me, so we have to understand, we have to come forward. Besides, we have so many barriers and this the thing that the barriers is made by ourselves in my mind, also barriers is made by our society, barriers are made by our family from the childhood, barriers are made from the peoples 
who we around us also the colleagues around the office that this is your limitations you cannot do this because you are a woman so these things we have to make them understand to our children to our society to our younger colleagues that you can do everything though we have been a very pressurized family very things after coming home office then everything we have to do alone did nobody will help us if we think in this way i think we can come out but we have to take we make them understand we make the people understand that we need a time for research we need to time to for the society we need time for the children we need time for the uh, empowerment women empowerment activities so this is the thing we should disseminate to our world i will give a little experience of me because i am also living in a such kind of a brought up in a such kind of family they are very open minded but when i go upwards and upwards somewhere so many hours i am getting and i am the pioneer woman in cancer manpower development including the governmental post and everything but last suddenly a group of people is on behind me still harassing me doing even they do not stop me they given the something the false information to the newspapers false information they to stop me even they are uh, harassing me to make something they do the case to the court like this so but we should not stop we should not we should go further and further so many things we should consider but sometimes we'll be so tired why we are so much um, not everybody not take caring us we will be very much tired but don't get tired and here the first thing you have uh, the today's uh, title is diversity equity and inclusion he knows that child marriage female genital mutilations this is occur in especially in africa regions these are still not stopped if you go in uh, in a various uh, countries you will see that we are talking but still there is wing we can see we cannot in a binded place we have to open we have to go forward we have to see our looks eyes should be vision like beams i view you have to see like a bird where it is happening why we will keep our not will think only for our country we have to think for the world even in the many high income countries women are often less paid than the for the similar services this gender based discriminations and violence and suffer from big attitudes and gender policies that restrict their independence in their bodies i i will uh, tell about first i must say i thanks to the professor uh, I, if i mistake her name professor uh, gaina al nakib mention uh, that dr sri he has come a very bad country who is a little bit war you see here we are still thinking that the ukraine and russian war but if we there is a gender i is my view if there is a gender uh, balance i think when there is a discussion when there is a counseling then it will be no war so the mains are little bit war mentality and the females would like to adjustment how we will live in our family to make an adjustment so these the things are very important things and you see that that uh, this time covid 19 how affect no world no country of the world can be escaped so this is the climate and you know that that the women are increasingly recognized more vulnerable to climate changes impacts than men so climate change is the most greatest global changes in coming near future in 21st century and these women are constitute the half of the world populations so 
how we can change these things and why women are more likely vulnerable to climate change. There are many offices and they are uh, this difference between men and women also see in differential roles, responsibilities, decision making, access to the land, natural resources, opportunities, needs, which are held by both sexes. So when we put this gender quality at the center of the climate change, so the, we should integrate the diverse gender perspective across the holistic and enduring climate environmental policies and programs. So we, women and girls, I think your students and your, wherever you are, even your children, please tell them that coming our world is climate. Actually, this will happen because you see, we are just like a closed door, just like a closed door in the in the room, we cannot do anything. There is a home office. Even we cannot, uh, we can see what's affecting the home office. Also, there is a, some pros and cons. But for our next generation, it is very bad. Effect will be near futures. So I think that's the we have to for the developing countries, especially the poor, poor women. They have need so adaptation strategy in the face of climate variability and change and this like agriculture will be affected so i my opinion that the world has witnessed very big significant change and attitude shift we are seeing looking that is progressing but the doctor sri mentioned but it is very slow but slow is depends it for us because we have to go first. We have to think first. We have to uh, 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 like a scheme of our work. What will be the next? What will be the next? In this way, if we go, and then every girl should have, a, uh, I think, a dream that we can have to do something. We have to do for the society. This is the only thinking mental change will make you progressive the gender participations and this change will make the world sustainable so wherever we see develop achieve full gender equality and around the world so they are every country has suffered discrimination i must say i'm just giving an example like japan this is a very Develop, uh, developing countries, but very in good situation. But you know, in Asia region, Japan is the one country where the women are mostly suppressed, even not Indonesia and Bangladesh and other countries. So this is the thing. So when, where we looking that these countries are very good, but you don't know what's happening there. So we have to make uh, some initiatives and adaptive methods to do some things. So I will not no longer because there is a speaker and she, she will, I would like to hear from him, her. And so lastly, I can say that women priorities must be reflected in the development planning and funding. And also the funding organizations and donors should also take into account women specific circumstances and gender specific impacts, especially coming issues is climate change in areas of the water, food security, agriculture, energy, health, digestion, management, conflict. In this case, we should to have special measures for adaptations. And lastly, I must say, OWSD is a such a good uh, platform where we are working for the women. But I have seen, I must say, because if this is a society. When there is a society, it is an extra work other than our regular work. But please don't forget, within this work, you can have a certain role and certain uh, uh, your things you come to, 
your vision your comes to in front of the world which cannot become maybe in with your institutional things but it can come to this society and you have the chance to do something for the women through this society so make more members make something for your country then think for the regional think for the uh, inter countries collaborations think for the research think for the things i think this is the way step by step i must appreciate what the dr sri how he, she is doing a very very good things now she is the member of the academy of science so please follow some guidelines and they will be the your guiders and then in this way we can do something to owsd and thanks to all the members especially dr sri and also i can say the agya i i don't know the pronunciation is good <laughs> and and the others all the beautiful faces and it's the very things about 44 members are here so make it 88 make more members everybody will ask they are members but most of them are inactive so i ask them why because first we should realize that why we will do this thing what is our role like fathers day mothers day valentines day it is also the women's day it is only a symbol but every day every day every hours every minute every second we have to think what how i can change the world and make it sustainable through women's empowerment thank you thank you indeed um, professor azari for that lovely speech um Yes indeed we are as women have many barriers to overcome and um as indonesia national chapter especially is also uh, playing a part in trying to uh, improve the condition of um gender equality towards gender equality um as i'm sure is happening with us around the world um so thank you for that and i uh, I think we're still a little bit behind on time but I think I would like to invite um all of our speakers and our audience to um so we'll have a, a just a very quick photo session to um remember this day by so if everyone could have their camera on please um just very quickly okay thank you <laughs> please open your camera everyone Okay. I take a first photo session. Smile. Okay. Uh, okay. Smile if you want. Okay. Okay. Um, is that? I think we've got everyone. So, um, yeah. Okay. So, thank you again, um, Dr. Sri Fatimati and Professor Hasin Azari, and um. We're going to move on to our next, which is the main session. But I think I believe before we move on, um, the committee uh, have just a very short video to share um, some information about us Indonesia National Chapter. So for those of you who are not yet familiar with us Indonesia or would like to know more about who we are and what we do, this next video would be of interest to you. So after this, uh, we'll go directly to um, listen to Prof. Anya's talk. Thank you.
lovely video indeed. So we can see that there are so many activities um, and obviously there's no all-male panel. So as Indonesia supports women in that way as well, obviously. Um, so hello again, everyone. And now we are at our amend event. So I would like to welcome um, to the stage, to the virtual stage, Associate Professor Ganya Naji Almaki, PhD. Hello, Ganya. Um, so our guest lecture today um, is a very special women scientist um, whose academic and professional journey is nothing short of inspirational. So we're so lucky to have her here today. Um, thank you for being here with us, Professor Ganya, and I hope you're well. Um, so before we start, I would like to um, give a brief introduction to, um, of our speaker today. So, um, Dr. Ganya, so Associate Professor Ganya Alnaki, um, Dr. Ganya, is a Associate Professor of Nutritional Sciences, Faculty of Agriculture, Food and Environment, University of Sana and Yemen. So Dr. Ganya received her PhD in nutrigenomics from University Putra Malaysia in 2009. And she has gained her scientific experiences from different advanced laboratories in many countries, uh, including Malaysia, um, USA, Germany, and Italy. Currently, she is a research fellow holder, a research fellowship holder, sorry, at Center of um, Center Agriculture, Food, Environment, University of Trento, Italy, and she has been awarded um, national, regional, and international awards, and participated in several international scientific conferences. So I'm sure that we will be treated to an interesting hour ahead. So before we start, um, I would like to remind the audience that after 60 minutes um, of talk, we will have a 15 minute session of question, um, question and answer session at the end. So should you have any questions, please feel free to drop them down uh, in the chat box and we'll get to it at the end of the talk. So without further ado, I will now invite um, Professor Ganya to present your talk. Um, please time and place. Um, are you Thank you very much for you, Angia. And I'd like to start with Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and very good afternoon to all of you. And I'm so glad and I'm so happy and I'm, I'm so thankful to, uh, to Indonesian National Chapter for giving me this chance actually and opportunity to be with you today to maybe share with you some of my, you know, experience and some of my challenges and difficulties that I have faced during the last seven years. And actually, after listening to Prof. Uh, Siri Fatmawati and Prof. Hasin, I really, I'm really motivated more. And, uh, you know, I'm learning from you. After uh, listening to this talk, I would like to be, how to say, as Prof. Hasina said, Hasin, we have to have collaboration. Are for you know our our situation as a less development country. It will be good to have more collaboration or more exchange and more also you know exchange ideas, student maybe research and you know uh, you know some more also. And after also I have seen the activity of national chapter, the Indonesian national chapter. You make me also feeling. I hope if I was in my if I am and if I was in my country, so I can contribute to you know, make our, our national chapter is more active because I think it's not active anymore. We don't have any activity since three years, maybe because of the war situation. And when we talk about the gender, gender equality in Yemen, we don't have gender equality. We have gender inequality, but for us during the war and crisis, we are not, not now how to say hoping for gender equality, we want this and we want, you know, we want to be maybe as we were in 2011. We have learned from the crisis and war in Yemen that women are the big loser in the war. They are the big loser. Some of them, they lost their families, their husband, their children, the father, the brothers, and some of them, they lost their job and some of them, they lost a lot of things. But we have learned also Women from Yemen during the crisis and the war, they have they have a big role 
in many things. They are caring about the family. They are trying to have peace. They are trying to, you know, to, to help in, you know, make the, the parties in Yemen who are making the war uh, very close. And they work in many different manner. So maybe my talk today, it will be a little bit, uh, how to say, <laughs> it's a bit difficult. And I hope that from my experience, you will learn and you will be able to try. Maybe when you compare my situation to your situation, you are more and more lucky. So maybe you will say, we have to do more and more. So just let us start by sharing some you know, slides. And then during the slides, we can talk. So as a young refresh PhD graduated, I have finished my PhD in 2009, and then I was in Malaysia for another two years to do my postdoctoral in University of Utrecht, Malaysia and University of Punch Alam. And I spent uh, a time of eight years in Malaysia to do master and PhD and postgraduate. It was a very great time for me to learn more, to, how to say, to improve my scientific, you know, career and to do few publication and pattern and also to learn from women in Malaysia. Because as you know, I think Malaysia and in, in, in Indonesia is the very good example for, we can say, Muslim women. They are really contributing to many sectors, you know, and this is different from our countries like Yemen and also that area. So we can see the women from Malaysia and Indonesia, they are really represented in every sector and everywhere. So actually, I, I was an assistant professor first in Sana'a University, Faculty of Agriculture, Food and Environment, Department of Food Science. And from the time from 2011 to 2017, I worked hard and I had done few things in Yemen because I wanted to contribute to develop my country, to develop the sector because as a nutritionist, we have a lot of problems in Yemen. Yemen malnutrition children is a big problem. And I think, you know, we have this problem. And then the, the, the latest the statistic is that we have almost 70% of our children, they are malnutrition. And maybe they are severe malnutrition and moderate malnutrition. And also we have a lot of problem regarding to malnutrition and food insecurity and all this issue. So it was a very, I mean, great uh, uh, opportunity for me to be a nutrition nutritional scientist. So when I'm back to Yemen, I work hard to, we have, I am in the department of food science and I don't know, maybe in Yemen it's a bit difficult to have a, a new department because you, know, you need a lot of facilities and a lot of colleges. So I work hard with another colleagues to have a subdivision of the department. We call it division of human nutrition. And in this, uh, I mean, division, I, I opened a nutrition subdivision. We had a lot of students. They come to this, uh, I mean, uh, division and the department, especially girls. I remember when I was a research assistant in Sana'a University before I traveled to Malaysia. All my students, all my students, they were, I mean, I mean, male. And after I back and we opened this uh, uh, division, we had almost eighty percent of our students are females. So I used to teach few subjects related to, many of the subjects related to uh, nutrition uh, department. And also I worked for many things in the university as a representative for the Sana'a University uh, for different, you know, uh, regional and national uh, sectors. I also represent my department in the university in terms of uh, scientific issues. And I also uh, tried with another colleagues to open a master program. We had a lot of students, especially female, for master program. I remember when, you know, students among them, 28 are females. And they were very, you know, uh, willing to learn and to have scholarship and to travel like me. And so you can see, like, they were really motivated to, to be a scientist. So in Yemen, what I was doing, I was doing, you know, uh, science, I mean, or you can share research, but how to say, uh, a basic research, research, because in Yemen, we don't have a lot of facilities and fun to support research. 
So we, uh, I could, you know, with a lot of hard work to get uh, some fun from Tuas and also help from my supervisor to establish a small uh, animal house unit to do my research and also lecturing for master and undergraduate and also, you know, doing seminars and try to, you know, to, to, to present some scientific seminars and some scientific issue in the universities in our department. Besides that, I could have to say represent my country and the Sana'a University, my faculty, uh, you know, in different issues. I was a Fulbright Scholar in US in 2014. And also I have been awarded as, as a regional award in Sudan for the best research in, uh, in, uh, in herbal plants and disease prevention. And in 2016, I was you know, lucky and I was, you know, very lucky to have this award uh, with the Dr. Siri, the 2016 Elsevier Foundation Award. And I think this is the main award that gave me uh, open windows for more, you know, uh, uh, opportunities in the future. But also beside that, what I was doing in Yemen, um, which I, very, I, I was really like to do this type of work. Besides my work as a scientist and, and as an academic, I had a field work also in nutrition awareness for rural women and men in Yemen villages. Why I was very, I mean, willing and very happy to work like that, because I came from village. I grew up in a small village and I grew up in with, uh, you know, a family. My father was a farmer. So I know those people, how they really, uh, you know, depends on plant and, you know, functional food, we call it to treat their diseases. So it was like a big interest for me to know, you know, the, the scientific basis behind their use for the, some herbal plants and these things. Because most of the Yemeni herbal plants, they were not uh, addressed scientifically, or there is no, no scientific uh, evidence to support their traditional uses. Beside that, I have a very nice uh, program in, uh, in Yemen TV. It was a, like uh, to say weekly program that I went to the TV and I talked about uh, food processing and nutritional awareness and how to feed the children and how to feed the pregnant woman in a very simple language that can the rural woman and the you know a normal society people they can understand. And I also I have developed a guide for food processing for rural women. Also. I was doing a lot of training for, you know, rural women, because during the first crisis of the war, of our war, when it was in 2000, started in 2014, the bad one, the, the rural women, I was, I had to say, I had a small association for rural women, female rural women in agriculture. So those women, they were really a farmer and they are, they have some groups during the war, it was very difficult for them to, you know, send their product or send their uh, groups to the market because there's no oil, no patrol, no transportation, and they don't have electricity. And we, we also don't have electricity during the war. So some of these uh, groups, they were spoiled. So I had a very good program. I applied for, you know, UNDB and I got grant. And we had some very good, uh, how to say, uh, program for training rural women in doing a lot of uh, things. So we target almost 10 different uh, government in Yemen. And I target each uh, group in each government or in each village that they, we can uh, develop a product from. So I teach them how to do jam, how to do you know tomato paste, how to do uh, cheese, how to do concentrated juice, how to do many things. So a lot of success story behind this program, which I really like it. And I was working with my student, the first student, those who, who graduated from nutritional student, they were 16 students. So we were traveling to different places and conduct a lot of training on, on this food processing and nutritional awareness. And so you can see this activity as a scientist, as an academic, as a researcher, as a, contributing to, to you know, a skill development of women in rural areas. And then suddenly you get the war. Of course, we had the war before, but from 2014, the situation was more very difficult. No electricity. There is a lot of pumps, and no, you know, uh, water to do the research. 
And my, my faculty, it was like, how to say, a bliss for army. So it was uh, bombed a few times and I lost my lab and I lost my animals. And my students, they were displaced. So you can just imagine, you were very established, you were very hardworking, you want to do a lot of things. Suddenly, everything has been damaged. What to do? It's a sad, you know, picture, but you can see what happened to our, you know, higher education institution. We have almost 3,500 schools were destroyed. Almost all the universities in Yemen were destroyed, if not totally, partly. So you can see this is some of my labs, how they look like. Then, in 2017, it was a very hard time for me. What to do? There was no, you know, salary for almost two years. And no, you know, electricity, no water to do research, animal were dying, students were displaced. And I was really struggling what to do. Should I leave my country in this hard time or should I be in Yemen? So if I, if I was in Yemen, I would not help my country. <laughs> then I was searching about new opportunity. I have to go somewhere to save my scientific life. Could you know contribute to be you know in, in, in a safe place that I can that I can do my research to represent my country to to help my people when I back. So it was a very how to say a good opportunity for me to apply for uh, Cliff Schwartz in Chile in Germany. And you will be surprised how I get this fellowship. It is the impact of 2016 as a foundation. We had a film. I was with Siri. So I was talking that I need some people to help me and to, to, and to take in my hand. One professor from Germany, he was reading and he was watching this movie. And then he contacted me through to us. He said, okay, I will take on my hand or on your hand. He was helping me and he found for me an opportunity as a flip work in Genetic, which is a fellowship that given to African scientists who are in war countries. And what I mean here is written scientists, I am not political, written scientists that I cannot do my research. My research is be, has been stopped because of many issues. So it was a very also difficult time to leave Yemen because in that time, the Yemen was closed. No embassies in Yemen. So me and my husband were staggering a lot to move from Yemen to Sudan. And we spent in Sudan six months waiting for the visa. Then we could be in you know, Germany. And I got the fellowship in Germany for two years. So, how to say, a lot of challenges also to be in a new place with new language. Of course, I can speak with them English, but you know, they prefer maybe to, to speak. I mean, I should have, you know, at least the basic German language so I can deal with. And also my husband, his English not good. So it was like, how to say, a very hard time. I spent three months learning Dutch until, after three months, I could speak, with, you know, speak, I mean, I have to say, uh, slowly, slowly, so they could understand me. And in Germany also, I was lucky because I was doing the research about my blood from Yemen. And I think it was a very good opportunity for me that I, I joined a group who were working in genotoxicity and safety issue, which I never been done. I was doing some biological activity, chemical characterization, but for the genotoxicity and safety of this plant, I was not doing. But in Germany, I could you know, work with three different plants and we have a very good result. So I can say that my skills has been developed and I learned. And I'm, I have to say, I can say that I'm very proud of this time. I could, you know, uh, uh, I could publish two papers and I, I was, you know, uh, I mean, I attend, uh, I attend uh, international, uh, uh, Congress, International Scientific uh, uh, Conference in Dresden University. And my work has been selected as the boss poster. It was a very good I mean, opportunity for me. Then, being a scientist from less developed country and also for those type of scholarship, the limitation, I mean, is the limitation of this scholarship is very uh, challenging. So they give you maybe two years and three years 
and this is set the maximum. Then where to go again? I don't want to be a refugee because I want to go back to my country and serve people. And after I, my, my fellowship finished in Germany, I back to Yemen again and I spent three months there. So it was really challenges for me. The situation was even more worse than before. No salary. No, you know, it's like a lot of changes in administration, you know, in my university. So I don't want to talk, but it's about a lot of difficulties. So again, I was really struggling. Then I back to internet and I searched again and searched again and searched, searched again until I got this fellowship in University of Toronto. When I got, you know, the, you know, uh, when I got the position, to be honest, I was in Germany in a place called Portsburg. I never heard about this Portsburg uh, before in my life. When I talk about Germany, maybe we, 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 we think about Berlin and different, you know, uh, places. But Portsburg was new for me, but it was a very great place. It's located in, you know, in Bavaria areas. Also for Italy, when we learn about Italy, Maybe we can, you know, learn about Napoli, Milan, you know, uh, how to say, room. But uh, Trento is a bit far place. So when I, uh, they did interview for me, and I was not really, how to say, hoping to, uh, to get it. We were four, and then I get, uh, we, we did the interview, and I was selected. I was selected with 97% mark. The second one was 75. So it was a very good project, you know. It's my experience, you know, it's, it's difficult. It, it was really uh, the bland proposal that I, I applied was very good. So I got the fellowship. Then I traveled from Yemen to Egypt. And I did the interview for the, for the visa, and it was okay. Second day, the, you, 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 the Italy was closed because of the COVID-19. So I was in Egypt waiting for six months. Until January, uh, sorry, until August 2020, when the country is open, they could, uh, I mean, uh, brought, brought me to Trento. And now I am here in Trento for almost, uh, how to say, two years. And I really like the work that I'm doing here. Uh, people are more easier. And I am collaborating with three different universities, University of Bolzano, University of Trento, and University of Messina and Sicily, I'm doing research. And actually, what, what research that I'm doing now, is a research about uh, prickly beer tattoos seed oil. What I like from this fellowship that I work my own project. Besides the work on my own project, the plant that from Yemen that I was developing, developing during my last time, I was also involved in, uh, this is a paper that I have published now. I was involved in another, um, I, I was involved in another project that about waste management. It was a, a very good chance for me to be a part of this project because they could extend my fellowship another one year. And what I am doing, they are treating the organic waste using different treatment and they are producing a compost for plants. And this compost should be, uh, how to say, uh, studied for its safety and genotoxicity. So I'm doing this part, the, the safety, genotoxicity and tox toxicology evaluation of this compost in vitro and in vivo. And because of this project, I could you know, have one year more extension here in Italy. So uh, it's, it's hard to say. I can say that a lot of lessons that I have learned from these experiences. First of all, I'm trying to have a good network connection with this university that I am now working in and uh, last time in Germany. Can you make a slide share? Uh... Of Ghana because okay. right now we yeah okay. okay I mean uh yeah it's enough <laughs> I think you have a lot of slides <laughs> already good yeah so it's uh, so the, the most important thing is, is to have to have a good uh, I mean network connection with this university that I'm working so maybe in the future I can have some you know you know, visiting work or exchange student. But when you when you talk now, when you ask you about my institution, it's very difficult to do collaboration research with them because there is no, I have to say, equality in, in many things. And, and the, the University of Sana'a now is very weak. 
So I could not really how to be uh, cooperation, but also how to say it's a lot of challenges. I should say that because in Yemen I was uh, uh, an associated professor. Now I am when I am I got this fellowship, I am a researcher. So I'm not involving in academic, you know, teaching. I'm involving in I'm on only research. And this is, you know, makes, uh, how to say, it's good also, but uh, you know, when you have done a lot of work in academic and administration, and then now you are just a researcher, you will feel that you are a little bit, I don't know, this is uh, what I, I feel. It's a challenging also. And also, uh, how to say, and stability, and continue, and, uh, because this fellowship is not continuous. So you will feel that you are not stable. You have to spend a lot of time on internet to find, another opportunity and to do, you know, uh, you know, is uh, to find another opportunity is not easy because it's very competitive in Europe, even for the European people, especially in Italy, it's not easy. So how to say, you will be really under stress most of the time, searching, trying, and the other things in your mind, your heart is with your people in Yemen. Looking to the news, what happened? How is my family? And then I just, my mother passed away, I was not there. My husband, father passed away. He was not there. So it's a bit difficult when you feel that you cannot go back to your country because you cannot fly direct to Yemen. It's a lot of problem also. It's so it's maybe you are much, much better than me. You have a safe environment. You have, you know, a good institution. You have at least, you know, a, you know, a place that you can work hard and you can contribute and you can search about new cooperation. And you can use this opportunity for like to us and us. They are doing a lot, especially to us, a lot of you know, uh, you know, fellowship, individual group fellowship, and also visiting literature and many things. And um, I don't know what else I can say. So it's uh, it's hard to say. It's um, it's an easy issue and difficult issue. Not easy issue. It's a challenging issue. But when I think about other colleges in Yemen, my another, you know, uh, you know, professor, lecturer, I feel I'm lucky because I, at least I have a safe place and I'm doing research and I'm developing my career and my skills, but they are there, no salary, and they cannot do many things and they are under stress of this bomb and war, they don't have electricity, you know, it's like, if you have money, you can have this sun, uh, sun you know, energy. But if you don't have money, it's difficult to, for you to have. The prices of many things are increasing. So sometimes I feel so weak because I feel that I should go back to Yemen and contribute to the, you know, to many things. But what? How? It's it's difficult. You don't have anything in your hand to do now. So just work hard, try to do research, and represent your country. Here I am in Italy also. People, they don't know anything about Yemen. So I had to have the chance to be invited to, to talk about uh, my country as us and in a social event. So this is also a very good, how to say, as a community outreach here. And to show them that Yemen has a very nice history and places. And Yemen not only the very, uh, you know, poor country and war country, we have a lot of good things. And uh, I, I don't know, maybe, <laughs> Nobody can help, but at least you represent your country in a nice way. So I, I don't know what also to talk. Maybe it's uh, the, the time is already gone or you still have time. I don't no, know. You still have um, about um, 20 minutes or so time. So you still have plenty of time, about 20 minutes. So uh, really, I advise you all of your sisters to be like, to, to be more hardworking because because if you see me, me like I was really, really, I you know, love my place. I stay in my lab in Yemen and in my office from morning until Maghreb, we say in Arabic, until you know late evening. And I want to do many things, but suddenly you lost everything. You, you know, you have a, you have a good place. You have a safe place. No war. So maybe you can really work hard and you know try to find you know opportunities collaboration and I find this uh, through this OS national chapter it's very good to be uh, to be really in a collaboration maybe I, I, I don't know as as now I establish and I try starting with the uh, Dr. Siri to have exchange student 
through applying through OST. And I hope it will be, I mean, working. We know it's very competitive, it's not easy, but it's hopefully that we can do something. And uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's I, I don't know what, to, what, what also to say. So if you have any question, maybe we can go through more. So this is the story, this is the things. It's, uh, it's, uh, uh, this is my experience. This is what you see, this is the, the things that I, I would like to share with you. Wow, indeed. Um, I'm almost in tears here. That was very, very inspiring. And I, I can see that, um, you know, you miss your country so much and that, um, you know, you're willing to do pretty much anything to be able to contribute back to your country. And I think that's uh, very honorable. Despite all the, um, the phase of adversity, um, different challenges um, that you face and you're still um, thriving as well. So I think that's very inspirational and um, hopefully, you know, provides and gives uh, motivation to all of us here this afternoon. So thank you for that, um, Dr. Ganya. I think that was very inspiring talk. And um, thank you for sharing um, your experiences, the good and the bad. And I think that um, even though we might have um, quite a big difference in terms of, you know, uh, you know, as in Indonesia, as you mentioned, at the moment, the situation is uh, far more conducive. And I think we could use um, some of that fighting spirit that you're sharing that you have um, as well to trying to, you know, still improve and improve and improve. Um, the quality of women scientists in Indonesia, as well as um, women uh, in general in, um, in the community in terms of our roles and responsibilities. So um, I think um, we'll, we have plenty of time for discussion, which is the good news. And I, let me see, I don't think we have any questions yet in the chat. So um, I would like to invite, um, and members of the audience, if you would like to um, ask a question or um, have some thoughts or discussion uh, for our speaker today, please feel free to raise your hand and um, or feel free to uh, uh, unmute yourself and ask the questions directly. is the moment that I'm waiting for the International Women Day. Uh, it's not actually it's not the question, but I just would to ask you about your opinion, which is from Mrs. Sri or Mrs. Hasim or Mrs. Asrudin or as well as Mrs. Gania. It's about how is what is your thinking about, what is your opinion, sorry, about the gender in case of gender mainstream in Indonesia? Because now I'm one of the uh, member of the uh, gender literacy in West Java, which is very important for me, learning from the best practice. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Mrs. Anggia. You're welcome, um, Nafi. So um, I, let me just clarify that you would like all three um, of our guests to answer that, or yes. should we? No, okay. Of all. <laughs> thank oh, okay. you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so maybe we should start with um, Dr. Ganya first. Um, what are your thoughts on um, what was the gender mainstream? And I think maybe some of um, any experience that you might have. On that topic. Uh, you know, I, I very little information you have a good uh, compared to us when I say it's compared to Yemen, you have a good gender stream and you have a good, uh, a good gender equality, of course, it's maybe it's not high, but when I compare to my country, it's still better. I just want to share with you with one, one thing. 
I am only the female scientist in the Department of Food Science and Human Nutrition in Yemen. Among the 13, you know, main uh, professors and associate, between uh, uh, assistant and associated, and I was only the one woman. But to be honest, in the time that when I back and I back, I really did not face a problem that because I'm a, I was a woman in my in my case, and I should say because this is an on, honest, I mean, and the real story. It's I was more lucky, maybe because I studied in uh, in Malaysia, so I had I mean, my English is good, so I can communicate. So whenever any opportunity comes, when I I mean I compete with my main you know colleges, I will get it. Fulbright was a competition one. We were almost second. I was I has the, I have been selected, and then for many things also I have to say as a national uh, fund, small national fund when I we apply. I was selected. I, I don't want to say because I am a woman, but I think because my application was much better maybe than others, and maybe I have some experience, and maybe also the language is many things. But honestly, as a woman uh, from Yemen, and it's not already Yemen, I don't know, because if you have heard about, you know, Yemen, a woman has a very big role since, you know, Al-Malika, you know, Balqis. You know, is I think Balqis was the 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 you know the princess of Saba. Saba is mentioned in Quran. So Yemen has a very good story in terms of a, a woman uh, leader. Maybe they are not much, but they are leader. We can say during you know the war, even the woman in many sectors they are not. I mean, there is an a big inequality in gender issues in Yemen in many sectors. But you can say women are more how to say bright and more. Uh, more producing than men, than men. To, to, to honestly, to be like that. I, I mean, to, to, to say like that. In many things, and I think now this problem in Yemen, I don't know how to say, but I can say that uh, male, they were feel to solve the problem. And now there is an association of Yemeni females called Sana'a University Academic Association for, for, for females or academic females. We are trying to have a Yemen voice, to have a Yemen woman. Maybe they are they were like a political scientist or journalist, so they can talk much about these terms. Because as a scientist, it's a bit uh, sometimes it's a bit difficult to to really talk about this issue. So now they, we have like a representative woman that can they represent the government, no government. Of course, this is among us. We are trying to do something. We have also one association called Yemeni Academic and uh, Professional. This is men and women that we are outside of Yemen. We are trying to have something, you know, to have some voice, to have something that to, to say, we ha they have to stop the war because now maybe the inside conflict is more dangerous than the outside war because you know, these different groups make the situation very difficult. So I think when I see, when I may, maybe I don't have much information, when I see Indonesia, I think, Gender, uh, I mean, issues in, in Indonesia is good. Women are there in every sector. Maybe we don't have the, the equality, but I think it's good. We don't have in equality even in the, you know, in developing country, we can see it. But I think you are good. Uh, and uh, maybe you can also contribute more. This is my opinion. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, I would like just to uh, think some points because we are working in the OST. Thank you, Mrs. Nefi. And you are a very good position. So the women's like in these positions with OST Indonesia national chapters can do better achievements. I have uh, one suggestion, but we are working with uh, the OST Central. That's uh, I would like to convey Dr. Sri if they would like to interest it. Because we would like to make, a, if you need more corroboration, and made more research on specific subject because because when there is a uh, Mrs. Ghana is here, Mrs. Uh, Dr. Sri is here, and if people are in different subjects, they are the pioneers and they are giving uh, special roles in the society. In that case, we can make the division of the, these women in a subject specific then we can make a uh, more webinar in subject specific with foreign experts and also we can have interregional collaborations so we are working on this 
most most probably will give uh, have this later because this is very uh, hard because when we are in a webinar sometimes we are all are here but we are not a subject specific because when there is a subject specific then we will be more interested because for the young generation to be more research research oriented so dr sri can uh, you, if you can make uh, these things that your members uh, can be a in different how many areas then you can see that maybe in medicine you have less members or maybe like a OS, there is a different sectors then it will be better we can have an all sectors members and we can dominate and we can ask the other regions also to have this type i think so thank you thank you uh uh, thank you, uh, Prof. Ganya and also Prof. Azari, uh, to um, answer the question from uh, Ibu Nevi. And I think uh, if we talk about uh, uh, women in Indonesia, of course, compared with others, now we are growing. I mean, the uh, women equality, uh, but uh, still in some uh, high level uh, leaders, uh, still we, um, yeah, we have uh, um, not so uh, equality, but uh, right now our government and also uh, in some, um, in some uh, institution in higher education, for, for instance, and also in some, you know, um, um, the industries. So right now, uh, women also growing uh, in the leaders uh, levels. And yeah, thank you so much for Professor Rosari for your um, your suggestion. Uh, actually, we already make mapping, uh, not only from the judge free, but uh, the, the the you know the the diversity of uh, um, research field. As you mentioned that we have, uh, right now we have the, um, in the basic science and also in the uh, medicine and also from the, um, from the part of social human era. Uh, because uh, if we talk about the O's itself, um, O's itself, uh, it, we, we, we cannot, um, uh, we cannot, you know, recruit uh, members from our I mean, uh, from us because uh, we have to um, get the member from the centers, right? Uh, and we have some requirement. And I think it's it's good as the first screening for us uh, to be a membership. Yeah. Uh, and right now in Indonesia, we have more than um, well, I'm not sure. It's more than twenty. Uh, uh, research fields, and uh, right now we have members from 20 provinces. So I think uh, that's um, for me uh, for your information. So thank you so much, Bunefi, and also Prof. Ganya and Prof. Welcome, Azari. Three, thank you. So that's that's quite insightful um, information as well. It's it's very um, encouraging to have our Indonesian national chapter stepping up. And also with the support of the um, center else. So I think uh, we have a question in the chat um, for Dr. Daniel. Um, so this is from Andy Bradley. And um, so thank you for a very inspiring talk. Your fighting spirit encouraged me to contribute significantly to my country, uh, which is good. I think uh, all of us are feeling a little bit inspired by you, Dr. Daniel, today. Um, so her question is, could you please advise how to society? Yes, oh, thank, thank you. Thank you for this question. Uh, okay. So I think what I have learned, especially when I was in, 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 in Italy and Germany, that the, what the, about this research and innovation issues. So the good research come from society and back to society. So you should know as a specialist in, in your area, what are the problems and what is the solving of one problem? So I think if you are, I mean, uh, close to, uh, of course you are close, 
if you are if your field is much close to your your society like what we are doing about this traditional herbal medicine what people are eating what people are facing what are the diseases that they are i mean uh, uh, they have in a special area the, you can you, you can see what is the problem and it shouldn't be like that advanced research uh, maybe like in my situation in Yemen, we don't have to do, of course, hopefully that in the future to go like very in Zoom to that advanced research. What we need in Yemen, as I mentioned that we have a problem in malnutrition. We have a problem in cancer issue in some places in Yemen. So we found that people, they are using a lot of habits, a lot of chemicals for the groups. And this chemical, it's, it's very bad for health. And uh, what people are, are eating and what is the, so you know the diet problem what is how to see the bad habit of of uh, of uh, you know uh, meal of eating so for, from from your people you will know what what are the problems then you have tried to select one problem and to go deep and study more maybe as you know i don't know as maybe as a student for master and phd it is a bit difficult to have to depend on some issue of professor but when you are a researcher already, you are established in your place. So it would be very good for you to, to be close to the society. I know maybe because in the developing country, modern country, they are very advanced, they go deep and they do advanced research. But for us, step by step, what, we, what, what are our problems? Then how we can, uh, I mean, develop a solution for one problem. As I told you that I started with very basic, of course, when I was in, 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 in in Germany or in US and in Malaysia, I was working, how to say, I can say some advance. I work a lot on gene, express, gene expression, protein expression, and a lot of mechanism of action and, and many things. When I go back to Yemen, we did not have the facilities and the fund to, to conduct the research that I was doing in Malaysia. So I tried to don't just be in one side. I use what the what, what, what source that we have, what I can do in Yemen. So I do academic and basic research. And also, I work in the field to help the society at the same time. And I was hard working, finding, you know, a places that I can continue my advanced research. So I could go to US and now in Germany and Italy, I could do, you know, somehow to say advanced research for the basic research that I did. Maybe mechanism of action, gene work, you know, uh, more deep in genotoxicity, DNA damage and many things. But I think uh, as, as you, you ask, uh, useful for the society, you should, I mean, know what is the problem. Like now climate changes is a big issue in Europe. So we, maybe I don't know in, in Indonesia if you have this climate, of course you will have the climate changes now, uh, you know, in the world. So this is, should be addressed in terms of green chemistry. And another issue is the waste management is a big issue now in the world. I'm so happy that I learned some things about the management of the West because in Yemen we don't have any things about this waste management. We, we are not ready, we are not, they use everything. They recycle everything. They make everything is useful for, for, for the another uses. So it's, uh, it's, this is also waste management is very hot topic and very good, you know, topic. Another thing is woman health, uh, child nutrition, and also cancer issue. Uh, maybe it's how to say this community nutrition is very important. What people they are eating, why they are, you know, uh, having some problems. And then how we can help people in, in you know making a good agriculture and we can work so it's a lot of if the things depends on your field so i think if we start thinking about basic research and not basic research how to say it's like a, a, one problem that face uh, one society in a place in such place so and then we deep this uh, we deep zoom we zoom deeply this uh, problem and we try to find a solution it will be very good uh, i mean rather to do a research that maybe it is not really helpful to our to our society so this is my my opinion but of course we need advanced research we need high research but it's like for a a, 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 a country like yemen uh, you see what i was doing in yemen i was just <laughs> teaching the woman scientists how to do these things and I was teaching them how to feed their baby and how to feed the pregnant woman. So it's like uh, the, the good research will come from the society. What are what are they facing and how we can help them as a scientist? I think I hope I hope if I could uh, I know answer to your question. I think that you know, thank you for that. I think you've given um, quite a lot of examples there. Um, 
to um, for people to start thinking about you know what it is that there's that gap that they need to fill what they can contribute with um, sorry it's contribute to the society in terms of their field of study so I think that reminds me of a friend of mine who's um, also studying um, nutrition and she's been very active in social media as well in terms of debunking hoax and myths about food um, you know about typical diets uh, diets that are not um, you know good for the body and etc so I think that's also um, a way um, of you know educating um, people, um, science communication in, in a sense. So I think that would be um, a good thing to do as well. And um, so I hope that answers your question, Gwandini. And um, I think we have another one uh, from Buika. Um, and she's interested um, to ask you, Dr. Ganya, besides your busy time with your work, can you share with us how do you manage your time for your family? I think that's a lot of people will be interested to see this, um, your answer. Thank you. Thank you for, for this question. Maybe to answer this question, uh, how to say, uh, I can say that I am not that very busy person in the family. I just got married in 2017, so I did not have children. I have only my husband with me now, and he is very supportive. And I think, you know, family are the key issue that uh, behind the success of the woman. If you have a good family in terms of parent, brother, sisters, and husband also. So I was lucky because I grew up in a very simple and nice family. They support me a lot in terms of my father, my mother, my sister, my brother, and now my husband. So you can say um, it's, uh, we still have a good time as a family, but it's really how to say I spend a lot of time on my work. Sometimes, sometimes from morning until late evening, and then you go back to, to your family. But I'm, I'm still a good wife and a good cooker at home. I cook our traditional food, and then we enjoy also. So it's uh, in that matter, I, I can see that family is the key support of uh, the success of any people. Because if you have a good family, whatever you face problem in your life, in your you know, office, you go back with you know nice environment you will forget you know the, the the tiring for the whole day but if you have you know difficult in your home it's difficult you cannot produce anything this is my opinion so uh, i'm lucky to have a good family very supportive family in terms of parents brothers sisters and also husband so just the children maybe is allah hikmat allah i don't have children so alhamdulillah for everything <laughs> thank you thank you so much Dr. Ganya. Yes, I, I, I sincerely agree with what you've just said about families, your biggest support. And I think um, a lot of us here, um, either as, as Indonesian members or um, other members of the audience today would have, um, you know, would, would be able to relate to that as well. Whatever career path uh, we choose, if we don't have the appropriate support, um, it'll be quite challenging, I would say. And um, that brings me to um, a question of mine I've been uh, wanting to ask you as well. I think in terms of just a generally, um, you know, we're trying to get more and more women and girls interested in um, going into um, science, but there's this um, issue that it's not so much a problem of getting them interested to do science. It's also a problem of the actual system that the system itself does not is not supportive enough to retain women in science. So I think going back to what Dr. Sri mentioned before about there's um, a decrease of women scientists in the higher um, positions. So um, what are your thoughts on that? Um, because I think from your experience as well, you know, you're working, you're working your way um, up in terms of your career and you have probably a very challenging, um, you know, um, that you've, you know, a lot of challenges that you face in terms of the war and everything else. But in terms of the academic system that you've experienced, um, what are your thoughts on that? Like, do you see that the some of the, you know, in the, some countries, the systems are more supportive of women or, you know, what do you think of that? Well, uh, I think, uh, let us say, uh, let, let me talk just 
about my experience in my country. Uh, yes, women in higher education, they are very few, but uh, a lot of challenges. What, what you should do, it's uh, uh, how to say, you should be just uh, how to close your eyes and your uh, ears about many, about, you know, a, a lot of things. So you have to be really focused. As a female scientist, I also faced problem, but I was like very focusing and trying to always improve myself. I never look to my behind or maybe listen to somebody if we talk and because I had, you know, it's, it's also challenges. I was not married and I was traveling alone, you know, the issue of, you know, maybe in, in Yemen it's not different how she travel alone or she is not married or she is a lot of problem. But I was really focusing in, you know, in my aim to achieve this aim. And uh, if you are good enough and uh, if you have a good, how to say, uh, background and also uh, so good, you know, project and good uh, things to, to apply for society and to see, so to, 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 to tell people about uh, whatever challenges that you have, you can pass through and you can you can win at the end. So it's, uh, I know in, in some, like in Yemen, uh, for myself, I had a, a little bit problem that it was very difficult for me to be, uh, ahead of the subdivision. Even though I work hard and I established the, you know, the subdivision and I had established and I give money and established the animal house unit, but at the end for administration work, where there was some money, you know, some incomes, I could not be, you know, the, 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 the head. Uh, it's because, you know, for this issue, uh, this one will go for men better than female. But you know, as as a scientist, you have to you, you have to you know, to do to to let something behind you to reach your big aims. So it's sometimes we have to be more flexible in in an environment that um, in environment uh, you are a, maybe one or two women and a lot of women. Women has to be not aggressive. They have to be clever and they have to to really you know draw their way in a nice uh, you know manner and to to reach their. Uh, to reach, you know, their aims. Because if you if you just stop in one point, of course we have these things in we have this issue in Yemen. That especially administration thing, higher institution, this higher position that uh, where people they can be, uh, I mean, representative in many things. Uh, of course, they will select men, their woman, or maybe women who are how to say they have relative in the government. They, Blah blah. So if you if you are just from normal family, you don't have a relative in the government. Uh, I think that you will not get uh, a good, good position in terms of government. But as scientists, and I work hard, and then you are representative of your country. It's, it's good. So I, I have to say, you have to work hard in all the way. So it's. Uh, it's it's different from one country to one country. We can see some women also. Uh, they are in a position, in a position, but they are not really good enough to be in that position. So a lot of factors that you know you can uh, can play around. Uh, if you are rich, if you are from uh, you know family does who are from you know government you know relative, it's, it's, we have a lot of things. But it's uh, how to say, in my case, I was really focusing just on research and, and how to represent Yemen by my research and how to, how to you know, uh, to, to, to help my, uh, my society and my people. And I think if you have uh, an honest aim and a good way, so you can, whatever you will face, you will, you know, at the end, you will get your, your uh, aims to be achieved. Thank you. Wow, thank you very much. <laughs> yes, indeed. I guess I get, I get there's, um, a couple of key messages there, right? Work hard and you know be flexible, but also don't ever ever give up um, if you want to um, achieve your big dreams. So thank you for that. Um, so I now I think we only have about um, ten more minutes for question and answer, and I would like to ask the audience again if anyone would like to ask a question. Um, no. Okay, in that case. I have a question. Oh, you do? Okay, go ahead. Okay. Uh, so, um, uh, Afghania, 
uh you know um i actually uh first would you like to please share your first slide because i think that's very in yeah important for us um in your uh first slide uh, you have a title that you are yeah would you please to sh share us okay so your your first slide in yeah yeah that's that's yeah that's why okay so um well uh from this slide truly um you mentioned uh five countries yemen malaysia us germany and now you are in italy right so um based on your experiences and um you 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 yeah you you explain a lot of uh, your research uh, your uh, contribution to the society and uh, i just want to know during war uh, era um you mentioned that yeah life have been changed yeah uh, at that time suddenly you lost your lab and i think that's the most uh, yeah the most critical moment for you um so at that time of course you ah uh, yeah you you are maybe not only you maybe uh, uh, us also will be very shocked that we yeah we, we we cannot believe what happened with us right so what is the first thing that you have done uh to face to solve all of the issue during the war and then finally you can achieve a lot of uh, research yeah uh, not only in us germany but now in italy so what is the first thing the least so maybe you can share with us so then we can you know um have some uh, motivation some inspiration that can be achieve yeah i think that's thank, thank you, you. and i love this picture thank you so much i love this picture i know timo queen on <laughs> yeah thank you thank you, Maybe, uh, yeah. you you won't believe you, you won't believe that when uh, as i tell you that the faculty of agriculture it was turned to a place of army so it was bombing so the first thing after uh, under the bomb i was with one of my female students and two of my male students, we were in the war, you know, you know, running to the lab and bringing my samples. <laughs> okay. You know, the extract. You can stop your uh, sister, yeah. You can, so we can see your face. Yeah. Okay, so I can stop sharing. Okay, wait. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you can say the first thing I was thinking about are my animals, my rat, rabbits, and my samples. Because they are they, as I threw, I treat them as my child. <laughs> so I was running under the bumps, bringing the samples, and I was lucky that I got to like because I had like a prickly pear seed and the extract and also the dried samples and the animals. So we were lucky. I could save my samples, and but I was not lucky because the animal house was really bumped. So it was like a very hard to say. Uh, very difficult moment for me to see the animals die. And there was one student, she was doing uh, the final project of her master. And she was really crying and crying until today she is crying. So what actually I'm trying to do to, to help uh, some of my students. So in, in many events that when I talk, I said, it is very it's very important to, to highlight also the three students. Maybe they will be in more than just more than maybe a scientist. So it's uh, the first things and I was, and I still remember my mom, she was like uh, crying, please don't go out, please don't go out. Then I went and then we could save the, those samples because it was very difficult for me again to find, you know, a lot of seeds and samples because, and, and uh, because the, the, the most of the samples they were collected from different areas from Yemen. As from agricultural faculty, we have students from different villages in Yemen. So during our topic, I teach them one topic, special topic in nutrition. I asked them to do documentation about the uses of herbal plant 
and in the recipe, they ask their parents, their grandfather, their grandmother, the, you know, to, to know this documentation is like your jamo, you were talking about jamo. So to have a recipe of, you know, the uses of traditional medicine is very important. Then you go back and you do some advanced research and you see how. So the most things, to be honest, not my life, is I was thinking about about the plants, some birds, and also the animals. But I was so not lucky because I could not save, you know, the, the is with this you know even the samples the science the things is like this so this is the the most important thing i was really uh really uh, i mean worried about them is my samples maybe you will feel oh maybe we have to it, it was difficult because you know when when you are under the war you see a lot of people they are dying so you will look to the death it's not really you know that it's not really affected you as last time when we had another day. Because every day people, you know, 10 and hundreds of people, they die. So it's, you will be more strong and then you just want to, to, to have a hope that maybe second day you will be in a good uh, situation and then you will continue your life. So it, it was like that. Yeah, thank you so much. That's such inspiration. I mean, so how you uh, think that you your treasure yeah your treasure are your samples and i can imagine it because you uh yeah you're struggling you 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 keep your spirit to keep your samples etc anyway we are very proud of you thank you so much for your uh sharing thank you very much thank you um i think we have time for one more question and i could see there is uh Busunarti who would like to ask a question, please go ahead. Thank you so much. This is Angia. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. In which my name is Nati, an educator in Semarang City. It's a pleasure to be part of today's event. This International Women's Day event was, was very enlightening. Also submit by the condition in Yemen. This is Kaya al -Nakib. Even of the war, um, even I'm sorry, events of war are unwanted even. Please ask permission how to empower women and society in the field of education, economy, and politics in Yemen. Thank you very much. It's a big question, education. Education is the, how to say, the basic of many things. And uh, unfortunately, until now, we have a lot of villages in Yemen, women, they are not educated. You know, it's like whatever, in some villages, in a lot of areas, uh, in rural areas, villages, Women, they will, uh, I mean, learn until, you know, uh, elementary school only, and then they will get married or they will stay at home because the family will be prepared to, you know, spend money on the meal for education. We still have this problem. Uh, we can say that, uh, how to say, we are now improving slowly, but we still have some problem, even in my area, uh, or maybe uh, the, 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 the female they were rich until high school and then it's difficult for them to to follow up you know the university because of many you know reasons and difficulties sometimes because they stay in you know in mountain the university is very far and it's a lot of problem but what we what we should do is like i think media is very important awareness is very important uh, i don't know media is maybe is like how to say i i feel that the tv is very good how to say media to because TV is uh, how to say is a simple way that can people this in, in the village they can have it or they can 
look at some such program is a national program. So as I as I, I as I told you that I had a, a weekly program. I was really uh, how to say at the end of of my talk. I talk that uh, please you, you have to educate your, your children. Uh, you educate your female because if the women are educated, educated in terms of many things, I, I was in a very different places and I saw, you know, uh, the baby, the infant with one day they give him, you know, a milk from uh, from cow or they give them, you know, the, the honey, honey is only one day. So when you, when you, talk, you know, this is not a good, you know, uh, nutrition, when you talk with them, they said, no, but we, uh, our father, Mother, they did like that, you know, uh, conducting some uh, national program and, uh, you know, visiting these rural areas and trying to motivate, uh, you know, uh, explain to the parents about the importance of education. And uh, this is what helped. About the political, uh, I, I, say, I, I should say that we have a few political women, but I'm sorry to say that. Uh, you know, some women they are not really how to say when they when when they reach the position they will just follow the man. So from here I'm thinking if you are a woman, if you are in a position of political, please be a woman. Don't follow men. Follow your you know your thinking and follow your society what they are need. Because this is only not for women and men. Like the situation in Yemen is very difficult. Now also male are, are facing a lot of problems. We have a lot of problems. So I am I am not that you know person who can say women and women in this in this time in Yemen is very difficult. So we have to 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 be enjoying it. We have to work together, men and women, uh, to, to 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 develop the develop the country. For science, women in science in Yemen is very few, very few. We have like very few women, but I think you know. Uh, we have few women, they are really very good. So as I told you, if you are good enough, if you have like, uh, uh, you can be a, a good example for others to be entered to that science. As I told you when I was in Yemen, before I, I, I traveled to, to, to Malaysia to do master and PhD, I have only two student female. I was the research assistant teaching some practical substance. And uh, most of them, they were uh, male. But when I back and then they saw me, huh, it's because in Yemen, it's very important to have a, a job, to, to be an employment, because it's, it's, this is also very good. If you are employed, you will have, will have money and then you will have a good life. So it was a very, I mean, how to say, motivation for student female to enter this department, nutrition department. Why? Because if, if you graduated, you can, find the job with you know NGOs with you know different you know sectors so names how to say like I graduated the student they will be like 10 years without no job so they will be an example for others okay my student my my college just studied blah blah and then the end he did not find a, a job we have this problem in Yemen and also in science we don't have higher education in science in Yemen like master and PhD, master is very few. Like in in, in engineering, you know, in some department of medicine, you no. Know. So you have to be very good to have the scholarship to go outside of Yemen, and this is very competitive also. So that's well, I mean, limit the student or a female student uh, in science. So. If, if you studied outside of Yemen, if you want to travel most of the countries, you know, they deal with English. So it's a lot of problems. Webinars, you know, uh, I had also a problem that I went to the schools and then I, I get some awareness in the schools. So one of the students once, one time, she asked me, uh, okay, my teacher, what did you study? How did become like this? So I said, a, a time, if it's hard to say, it's a completely well, it should be like a joint network from from scientists, from you know sectors, from government. It's have to say a, a whole program. To encourage women for education first, and therefore a science position will be, I mean, a minister again. If your father is a president, you will be a very good position. 
So it's like we hope this this can be changed. We don't have a democratic democratic only in in the name. So I am not that type of of people who likes the the the, the how to say political issue. I don't like because we did not have only the hidden from political people. They destroyed the country. Thank you very much. Thank you for that, um, Dr. Gaia. I hope um, you get your answers, um, Busunati. And um, so this has been an interesting discussion indeed. And as much as I would love to continue, um, I'm afraid we uh, have ran out of time this afternoon. So thank you again, Dr. Gaia, for a wonderful presentation and sharing and pouring your heart out and motivating us all. Um, so maybe a quick recap of some of the take home messages um, that I summarized for, from your talk in our session today, that we should, you know, education is important. You know, we have to work hard and never give up, but also be adaptive and flexible, you know, be smart in seeing opportunities, expand your networking, and also uh, make sure that you also have um, you know, given your time for that community outreach, get out to the community um, in whatever respective fields that you um, that you have, and also to increase awareness and knowledge, um, also in um, you know connecting to your fields like what you have done um, in Yemen. And despite all the adversity, um, you still um, you know you are quite an inspiration. And I hope um, you have a very long successful career, and. Um, good health um, as well as um, everyone here um, in the audience and I hope the situation does get a lot better um, in the future and I think um, I really hope that we can have the opportunity to meet face to face hopefully sometimes in the near future. So thank you so much again Dr. Gaia and also um, Professor Azari um, who has unfortunately left the meeting due to other um, commitments. And also thank you very much Dr. Sri Padmawati um, to you know, um, make sure that today, um, today's events happened um, and also the committee. And um, yeah, it has been a pleasure to be your uh, moderator for the event today and um, Thank you so much. So before we close the session, um, I think we have a token of appreciation to give to Dr. Gania um, in appreciation of your time and your, um, um, your work and also um, sharing your experience with us today. So, sorry? Uh, just uh, you will give me a chance to to say a few words, or is it the yes, easiest? yes, yes. No, I will give you um, a chance to say a few words. So okay, um, yes, um, feel free to do that, um, Dr. Gaia. I am really. I would like to. I really would like to thank you from bottom of my heart. I'm so happy to be with you, and uh, we need it. Actually, we have to learn from each other. I'm so happy. You know, and thank you, uh, Dr. Siri, for this. You know, uh, for for this uh, for giving me the opportunity to to be with you today. I'm learning from you, and also from the sister that in, in the chat. She said we meet in 2016. Uh, nice to meet you again, and to see you again, and to talk with you all again. I just want to say that um, how to say we should learn from each other, and we should be in more collaboration. Maybe. The time now is difficult for me, but I will be so glad to, you know, to, to be in contact with you. I remember Dr. Siri, she, she, she invited me for the conference, but due to, you know, due to the, how to the issue of the visa, because I was here, my, my residence was, uh, you know, finalized. It was difficult for me to travel, you know, because you are not in your country. So I would like to see you in pay, face to face again. And I am so happy with any more collaboration, exchange idea, webinars, or whatever. Also, so for the sister from, from Bangladesh, very nice to meet you, uh, Dr. Hasin. <laughs> and all of you, and thank you for the national, Indonesian National Chapter. And uh, happy uh, Monday for you all. And you are, you know, I'm very proud of you after I see your achievement. And I hope to learn from, I'm learning from you and I hope to do something like you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, uh, Prof. Ganyal Nakip, yeah, for sharing and also giving us your story. 
and I still remember, um, yeah, your um, your answer when you said that uh, the most precious things, the 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 your treasures, when war uh, in your lab, yeah, <laughs> you bring your samples. That's very very touch uh, for my heart, and also I think all of us. Um, how the scientists, I mean, so female scientists struggling in the war era. Thank you so much. And we today uh, organized by an OS Indonesia National Chapter. Thank you so much. Thank you, okay, so thank you so much. And I'd like to um, formally return the session to perhaps um, Fatma, would you like to? Um, uh, yeah, we have others uh, token of appreciation. Uh, so, would you please? Uh, thank you. And uh, I also would like to, um, yeah, express my thank you for uh, Dr. Angia Prasetya Putri. Yeah, thank you, Mbak Angia, for your time. And also, you are one of our, our inspiration that you have done a lot during your study. And yeah, next time we will, yeah, we will have time for you to share. And thank you uh, on behalf of OS Indonesia National Chapter. We would like to express my, um, yeah, my sincere gratitude for your time for this event. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure and I'm honored as well um, to be sharing um, today's um, celebration with everyone. So thank you. Okay. So I think this is the end. <laughs> yeah, please work. Yeah. Okay, so this is the end. So I say thank you again to everyone um, who have joined us today. And hopefully um, everyone will be in good health and um, stay safe and healthy. And um, so yes, assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'll see you everyone um, soon. Bye. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Happy International Women's Day, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Prof. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Terima kasih Ibu Fatma atas undangannya. Ah, thank you Ibu. Terima kasih. Bye everyone. Terima kasih Bu Fatma. Ya, Ibu semuanya. Terima kasih. Sama-sama. Assalamualaikum. Terima kasih ya, Jili. Mari Ibu Fatma. Amin. Terima kasih Mbak Anggia. Oke, Ibu-ibu, kita end ya semuanya. Salam sehat. Ya Bu Fatma, terima kasih.